Hi artists, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I build or I layer my colors and what I do to create the textures that I'm trying to achieve. I often hear Mr. Patacone tell his students to block in colors, block in colors. What I'm doing right here is very similar to what he teaches his painters. When I look at that tree, on the right hand side there, if I look at the reference photo, there's a lot of details in there. Individual leaves, I see individual little needles on the trees sticking out. So if I pay attention to all that detail work, I'm going to be overwhelmed as an artist, okay? Especially when you're trying to replicate something. So what I actually do is I ignore all the details and I and then I will usually squint my eyes, try to pick two to three colors that I see from underneath all that detail work. I'm not worried about the details, like I said. I'm just trying to find a couple colors from underneath all of that information. So if you look at my drawing here, you'll see shades of greens, yellows, ochres, and oranges. Okay. Now, I try not to get too technical as far as how many greens I use. I might use just two shades of greens and then maybe one or two shades of that yellow based on my reference photo once again. So initially what I do is I lock those colors in where they need to go and then I take my colorless blender and I blend or I smooth those colors together. That transition, I try to keep it nice and fluid I already know that at this point when I'm blocking in those colors, I'm going to be burnishing that paper. Meaning I'm gonna take that color, uh, that colorless blender and I'm really gonna be applying a lot of pressure, sealing all of that pigment onto the paper. Because at this point, I already know that the detail work that I'm doing or what you're seeing right now, that's just gonna be layered on top and I don't need to be burnishing that any further. So I actually need the details to sit permanently on top without blending it. So I blend my colors together initially. What you're seeing me do right now is I'm just finding the dark colors or that dark color for the shadow. Oftentimes, we're, we're tempted to grab the black and use the black as that shadow, but I rarely use that, you know. If I was going to be using a black, I tend to mix that with, with another color. I try to give it a little more temperature. Usually that other color that I mix with is usually a color that I'm seeing around or noticing that's in the area that I'm working with. So for this color here, I'm using this really dark brown that ties back right back with that ochre that you see underneath. Because when I look at my reference photo, some of the darker leaves or the detail work that I see are, they look more like fluffy leaves floating on top of all the other shades of greens and ochre. So all I'm doing right now is I'm gently just floating my pastel on top. If you look very carefully, I often take that, that pastel and I'm turning it in my hands as I'm working with it. You're probably wondering why, why does that matter? For me, I feel like if I don't turn it around, eventually, if I just hold it steady, I'll just end up with a flat surface on that pastel, which won't allow me to get the tiny little details or the mark making that I'm trying to achieve. So by just turning it around, I feel like I always have a sharp edge on that little pastel. Back in Drawing Foundation, I, uh, we talked to, to you guys about the different shading techniques that you can use, okay? There's that what? The stippling. One other technique that I talked about with my students was scumbling, you know? Just loosely letting that pencil float around 
if you look very carefully right now for this technique here, I'm really just scumbling my brown here throughout or on top of the, the greens and the ochres underneath. This will give it more realistic texture versus sitting there and trying to achieve every single little detail. And like I said to you before, we're working with pastels, so you're not going to be able to get all the perfect little details that you're trying to achieve. You're trying to create that illusion of a texture or a color. You're trying to let your audience, you're trying to let their eyes do the mixing and the detail work for you. If you look very carefully, what I do is when my tree touches or goes right up to the sky there, it's a pretty bold or harsh edge. How I soften that up is I actually bring the leaves, the little details, the leaves that are floating over off to the side on the tiny little branch that you can't see. And I actually stipple a couple little marks into the clouds or the sky itself. Here I'm stippling some, some leaves into the sky. I was hoping to show you guys what color I'm using, but it's kind of blurry. So if you listen to my little tip, the, one of the tips I gave you here, pretty much this is what I do for the remainder of my project here, okay? In my next video, I'll show you what I do for my foreground and talk about the different techniques or things I, I use when I'm coloring. Okay, thanks for watching.